Hi everybody, welcome back to Sammy Snakes. Today, instead of talking about reptiles, we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite animal groups, isopods. Isopods are also commonly known as roly polies and are a type of invertebrate. And they're just really cool animals that a lot of reptile owners own. I just wanted to show you guys my isopods because I've had them since September 2021, but I've never shown them on my channel. <laughs> I have posted them on Instagram and on Facebook, but I've never shown them here. So I wanted to show you guys their tank, what they eat, and the species I keep. So first starting off, I keep two kinds of isopod species. I keep dwarf whites, also known as Trichorhina tomentosa, and I keep Porcelio latus. Porcelio latus are a regular sized isopod, while dwarf whites, as you can tell by the name, stay really tiny. So I have these isopods in two separate enclosures. While they are cohab together, a group of them is in Butterscotch's tank as his bioactive cleanup crew, while some of them are in a 10 gallon breeder tank is what I call it, just cause that's where I have my main population of them. And if it gets overpopulated in there, I move them, I move a small group of them into Butterscotch's 40 gallon to kind of keep the habitats balanced and making sure that there's no competition for food and no isopods start eating each other. So when we talk about the species I keep, dwarf whites come white. There are dwarf purples as well, but um, I keep dwarf whites because they're more common. But with Purcellia latus, there are different varieties of them that have different colors. So for my Purcellia latus, I keep milkbacks and oranges. So as you can guess, the oranges are a nice light orange color, while the milkbacks are brown on the outside with a more white stripe down the middle of their backs. So now that I've kind of gone over what these isopods are, Let's take a look at their enclosure setup. So here is a view of my isopods enclosure. Here in the middle is their food bowl, which is the squeak thing. They have a cardboard tube in the back to chew in. They have a piece of cuddle bone in the back and they have a nice piece of cork book. So my isopods eat a mix of crusted gecko powdered food, the Fluker's roach and bug diet, and also fresh fruits and vegetables, typically carrots, and avocados, sometimes I will supplement their diet with mango as well. So looking at their tank, it's a pretty simple setup. You have coconut fiber as their substrate in their tank, and then that's mixed with sphagnum moss and leaf litter, which are two things they can munch on in between their main feedings. So if we look at an overview, you can see their coconut fiber over there, a more moist spot, which probably means there's more sphagnum moss under there. You see their cuddle bone in the back and you see their cardboard tube and their food plate, which will need switched out here in a hot minute. But as you can see, their substrate has different levels of darkness. That's because at the bottom here, it's more humid, while at the top is more dry. So they can kind of decide where they're going. You can see in this corner here, we have some dwarf whites as well as one milkback Porcelio labus chillin'. And they kind of like to hang out in more humid areas, but we want to give them a variety of options of where they can hang out. Hence why we have the kind of humidity gradient from the bottom to the top. So you're going to want to mist your isopods tank according to the humidity levels they need. So I probably only need to mist mine about once a week, really. As this soil, as well as the sphagnum moss, holds in humidity very, very well. So an isopod's diet can vary depending on the species. There are some isopod species that are more reliant on protein than others. My dwarf whites and Priscilla labus do very well on a fruit and vegetable diet, as well as supplements to their diet, such as the Fluker's roach um, feeding flakes. And sometimes I also give them powdered crested gecko food. 
Another supplement that isopods would need in their diet is calcium. Calcium helps them shed their exoskeleton safely without killing themselves. Calcium can be given in the form of a powdered supplement or in the form of cuddle bone. While isopods are invertebrates, meaning they are a classification of animals that do not have backbones, they are also crustaceans, so they are distant cousins to animals like crabs and lobsters. Being crustaceans, there are isopods that live in the ocean, freshwater, as well on, as on land like mine do. Isopods are beneficial to many environments in the wild and in captivity. They help with the decomposition of dead plant matter, fecal matter, and can even help in the decomposition of dead animals. I hope you all enjoyed this isopod video, and thank you for watching. Bye bye Really cool animals that a lot of reptile owners own. Yes, Lulu. This video is about isopods, not about cats, honey. You can't be in it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No Lulu's allowed in the isopod video.